All right, 3.3, increasing and decreasing functions. Functions. So, increasing functions are very simple. If from left to right, it's, you know, going up, right, like that, then it's increasing, okay? What do you want? Decreasing function, very simple. If from left to right, it's going down. It's decreasing. Okay? That's all that really is. Who are you? Constant functions. If from left to right it's at the same exact point, then it is constant. So, taking a look at example one, to sketch the graph 2x plus 3. So, plus 3, I go up 1, 2, 3, put the point right there. That's the y intercept. Slope is 2 over 1, so I go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, and there it is. So, find the domain. The domain is all real numbers. Why? Because there is no roots, there is no uh, fractions, so it's all real numbers. And the range, you look at the y's, it's touching every possible y as well, so it's... It's... If you look at the x's, you can't see anywhere where it, they don't touch. So it's all real numbers. Also, if you do, uh, if you want to know if it's a function, you can do the vertical line test. You'll see that the vertical lines will only cross at one spot. So the line is a function either way, since it touches every point and it goes on forever in either direction. The domain is negative infinity to infinity. And you get the parentheses on either side because it's infinities. So to find the range, for example, one, if you look at the y-axis, you can see that there is, uh, it's touching at every value. Um, every point is also being touched in each direction forever, so that's also negative infinity to infinity. So, determine where f is increasing or decreasing. To decide increasing and decreasing parts of functions, once again, you need to look at the x-axis to do so. From left, negative infinity, to right, f infinity is increasing the entire way. The entire time, from left to right, that's increasing the oh, function. So it's increasing the entire time. So example two, the absolute value of x, right? Remember, absolute value is always positive. So we can tell right there that it's even, because if I plug in a negative, it's still going to give me that. But either way, when I graph it, there's the points. Use your graphing calculator, right? To find your points, so you can graph it. There's 0, 0, negative 2, 2, 2, 2, right? They're all there. So we want to find out the, do the domain and range, or sorry, the interval of where it's increasing and decreasing. So remember to use the x-axis. Is part of the line above or below the x-axis? Well, start from left to right. From negative infinity to zero, right? It's going down, right? The graph is a V. So from negative infinity to zero, it's going down. So it's decreasing. Then from zero to infinity, it's going back up again. So from zero to infinity, it is increasing on that interval. So, where are the graphs decreasing, increasing, or constant? So here's the graph. And you can just graph this on your graphing calculator if you choose to do so. Okay, so from here to here, what's it doing? It's going down. Well, what's that point? It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So from negative infinity to 5, from negative infinity to 5, it goes down. Okay, and that could even be a squared off bracket. Then from 5 to infinity, it goes up, so it's increasing. So to determine what's going on there, when we go to graph that, that's what it looks like. Once again, you can just use your graphing calculator and plug that in. So what's it doing from here to here? It's increasing. So from 3 or sorry, negative 3 to 0, from negative 3 to 0. And I'm looking at it in terms of the x-axis. That's why this is negative 3 and that's 0. 
So from negative 3 to 0, um, it's... So let me just double check here. We got the graph. So from negative 3 to 0, it goes up, so it's increasing. And from 0 to 3, it's going down, so it's decreasing. If x equals 6, so 6 is just a straight line. If it's just a straight line, it's constant. All right, It's constant from negative infinity to infinity because it's a straight line. Okay. Average rate of change, it's the same as slope. So average rate of change is the same as slope. Average rate of change is the same as slope. Okay, There's something to keep in mind. Slope is rise over run. We talked about this already. It's change in y over the change in x. Uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The slope formula, there it is. We already talked about that in the last chapter. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You need two points to do it. Why make trillions when we could make... So let's find the slope again, which we've done billions of times. So 6 minus 8 over 10 minus 5. Negative 2 fifths is the slope. All right. Example 7. We have x's. x is 2 and x is 3. We need to find y1 and y2 by substitution. So all I'm doing is plugging in x1. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus 2 is 4. So y1, the points are 2, 4. Plug in that one. Plug in a 3 for x. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 minus 2 is 7. So the points are 2, um, two 4, and 3, 7. So that's why, because it's 7 and 4, 7 minus 4 is 3, or 1, so the slope is 3. As the absolute value of the number increases, the slope gets steeper. That's what we're discussing here. So the bigger the absolute value of a number, the steeper it's going to be, is what we're saying. The bigger the absolute value, the steeper the number. Okay, the bigger the absolute value, the steeper the number. If it's a fraction, then it's not going to be as steep. It's going to be wider. Okay. So, in the Mojave Desert in California, temperature can drop quickly from day to night. Suppose the temperature drops from 100 degrees Fahrenheit at 2 p.m. to 68 degrees Fahrenheit at 5 p.m. Find the average rate of change, and you should determine the temperature at 10 p.m. So, at 2 p.m. it was 100 degrees. At 5 a.m. it was 68 degrees. So, average rate of change or slope is what we're talking about here. So, 68 minus 100. 5 a.m. to 2 p.m. All right, this is where people get confused. It was actually 15-hour difference. So negative 32 over 15 is going to be approximately negative 2 degrees Fahrenheit per hour that we went down. So between 2 p.m. and 10 p.m. is 8 hours. So negative 2 times 8 is negative 16. So in 8 hours' time, it went down 16 degrees. So it was 84 degrees is what we were saying. All uh, right, I know that that was kind of quick, but it's just increasing and decreasing from left to right. If it's going up, it's increasing from left to right. If it's going down, it's decreasing. That's as simplistic as I can possibly make increasing and decreasing of functions. Okay, all you need to remember is the intervals, which we already talked about, so you can tell me from what interval it's doing what. But other than that, that's all that this section is about.